the main food to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for showing up. We'll pray for you guys. Tonight. Expect something well from us. Good evening, and welcome to Pastoral Talks. I'll be your host this evening. I'm Dr. Ken. Of course, you know who this is. With me, as always, is Apostle Cora. God bless you. And from you. a long way, from the other side of California, my dear friend, the amazing Praise Pastor the Lord. Will. And my special guest, it took me two weeks to get him, my business friend, David, is showing up tonight Hallelujah. to give his testimony. And, of course, the Apostle and Pastor are going to comment on some of the things he talked about. So, Pastor, I, uh, or uh, Apostle, well, you know, David, you, you have such a great testimony. Can you start us out? Uh, you, you were just a believer a short time at, before you got sick. Is that correct? Right. Okay. So go ahead and speak in the mic and tell, set us up. What did God do? And were you just saved at this moment or you weren't saved quite yet? Or were you? Because your faith is over the, off the top. Was not saved yet. Okay. Speak close to the mic. And there's Was not the saved yet. Tell, tell us what happened. Start us out. With my sisters or just me with you okay so last year on april the 2nd we were in a business meeting and part way through the business meeting it was time to take a break and everybody go to the men's rooms and so the men's room was about 60 feet away and i couldn't make it that far um, i literally got up walked about 20 feet ran out of breath oh. had to stop catch breath continue on and you're a perfect shape up to that point never perfect, had any perfect, problems perfect, you worked perfect. out everything yep perfect shape and then by the time i got back um one of the gentlemen who's real short with words looked at me and says what's wrong with you it looks like you're dying and at that particular time we decided we were going to call our meeting and uh, one of the gentlemen took me home and um, there i rested for about four or five hours and then i got up and um, went down to the local urgent care and as I was walking into the urgent care, the doctor that was on staff or on duty that night was walking down the hallway, see me walking in, asked the receptionist not to um, check me in, just to put me into the room. As soon as I got in there, he asked me what was wrong with me, told me, I, I told him I didn't know, uh, just didn't feel good, I was tired. And he looked at me and says, well, I think you're dying. And so he said, uh, I, I said, no, I'm, I'm good, it's just I'm tired, I don't know what's wrong. And so he did some vitals on me, um, said he couldn't, um, he, d he wasn't, he didn't have enough stuff to be able to fix me. Data or equipment or? Data, equipment, everything, okay. and just told me he was going to do some real quick vitals. He did it, and two or three minutes later, he was on the phone with the big hospital, Hogue over here in Riverside, or in um, Irvine, and he had um, their staff waiting outside, told me to get over there and within five minutes and not to go home, not to go get anything to eat, not to change clothes, not to do anything, just to go straight there. Can I stop you right there? Yep. Because I, I want you to really give this into detail, but I want the panel, the apostle and Pastor Will, to speak into this. Now, can you imagine, folks, I, and David's a powerful businessman. We'll get into his backstory after this, but this is, as Pastor always says, the backstory. Um, this is powerful. I mean, this man, you know, move, uh, I mean, he's just a mover and shaker, just business. I mean, he's got ideas that will literally change the world as we know it. He has all these connections, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in perfect condition, all of a sudden, everybody around him says he's dying. But notice he never said he was. He goes, I'm just amen, tired. Amen. I'm fine. Apostle, yeah. your thought before he goes on, because it's just a powerful power. His sister, we're going to get into it tomorrow night. His sister's testimony is always about too. Go ahead. Well, I, I believe that, of course, you know, when, when, when God puts something great inside of you and when you have a lot of creative ideas, which God has done in your life and he's going to do more for you, that the enemy is going to try to stop you. He's going to try to kill you. He's going to try to do whatever he can do to stop you. Good work. But because you didn't give in to that, even saying, like, I'm dying, like, I'm, I'm dead, like, you know, I'm not, like, you know, because you didn't say that, you know, you, I, I think your automatic thing was, is this real? Like, are you, like, am I really going through this right now? You know, because of your health and because of, your issue and, and I think that what happens is sometimes with people that when they have a a um, a, a thing to do for the Lord Amen. that, Amen. that they will all of a sudden 
adhere to the doctor's words and say, I'm dying. And then all of a sudden you're dying. They receive that word of death. But I'm telling you today, folks out there that are listening, that do not listen to those words. That's just the enemy lying to you. He's a big liar, a big, big, big liar. And so, but you have to hear the voice of God. And once you hear the voice of God, then, you know, he will take you on that, on that trail of where you need to go. I believe David has uh, a knowing that I know faith. Yes. I'll take you to the scripture real quick before Pastor jumps in with me. Is Mark 2, 1. We have to throw scriptures in so you can see it for yourself so you understand what we're comparing it to. Now watch this. Jesus went with Jairus. Is that how you pronounce it? Where's the prophet at? Uh, anyway, uh, the point being is he was going to pray for his daughter. She was dying. And then all of a sudden the servants ran up and said, wait, don't bother the master your daughter's already dead. Before he could say a word, Jesus jumped in and said, no, mm -hmm. just believe. He wouldn't let him talk anything negative. That's, right. that's what I believe David was doing. Yes. Pastor, Amen. take us from there. Yes, that's a phenomenal testimony, just a little part that I heard so far. And I don't know who you are. <laughs> 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 but I praise God for the testimony. And that's the thing that so much touches everybody's heart. I can't wait till we get to the backstory, But it is so true that the Bible talks about you could speak life or you could speak death. Sure. And, um, you know, I'm just sensing right, even right now, they try to get you to connect with them to say you were dying. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I also see there's people out here watching right now, watch your words. Yeah. There's people in your family, you, we yeah. say hurtful things like you're stupid, you're yeah. dumb, or you'll never ma be nothing, you'll never do this, you'll never do that. You know, there's times in my life I would say things like that, I had to repent. Because I realize our words speak life or they speak death. And, you know, Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, saying we're creating God's image. That's it. And we have dominion power on this earth. Hallelujah. And I always like to say we have God's DNA, yeah. our DNA yeah. in us. Absolutely. So if he spoke and he created the heavens and earth and all that's in it, we got to watch what we're saying. Good work. Now, David, go ahead and continue. I love this story. Go, go ahead and throw your personality in as well. Go ahead. And, and that's fun, the, the, what you just said about using your words and choosing your words. Yeah. Because in my business career, when somebody would irritate me, like a, one of my employees, I used to always look at them and tell them, stop it, you're causing me colon cancer. Oh, my oh. God. Okay. So as I'm checking into the hospital, we have no idea what's wrong with me. Uh, that was on April the 2nd. And then... Um, Later that evening, they came in and told me that I had two tumors, and they were both ca uh, colon cancer. Oh, so you spoke life into it. So oh, things started becoming wow. real. On the 4th of April, we went ahead and had surgery. Um, my mom and my dad were there, um, as well as a bunch of my friends and stuff like that. And so you know, my mom had gone through quite a bit. Um, and so you know, looking at my mom and, and trying to you know, make sure that she was calm and she was good, that I was going to be okay, and then that I was not going to be one of the children that was going to leave her. And um, so that was pretty powerful to, to, you know, get wheeled down the, you know, the, the hallway and looking at my mom, you know, just staring at me, wondering if I was going to come back. Were they believers at this point, sir? Or? No, my mom and dad, no. So anyway, we had surgery on the 4th. Everything went well. Um, my little s daughter came out on her own uh, the 10th of April to visit with me, and then she was leaving on the 15th of April. About 30 minutes after she left the hospital, um, two little nurses came in, and I hadn't been um, functioning quite properly, so they were going to put a catheter in me. And um, as the t two ladies were uh, getting ready to perform that operation, um, the, the tube didn't go down inside of me properly. It was clogged. And so they kept pushing and kept pushing and kept pushing. And after about 15 minutes, they gave up. Um, they came back in about two hours later, and they did it again. On the second go around, when the, when the cord went inside of me, um, it literally ruptured me, and I started bleeding um, and spurting up some blood. It wasn't all real bad at that particular time, but they got it under control. Um, and uh, after they cleaned me up, they told me, you know, about 10 o'clock that evening that they'd have the specialist come in and that she had a, a little different way to do this type of uh, procedure, and everything was good. Um, 
Were you concerned so, at this point? Were you worried? What were you thinking? No, I wasn't worried. Um, everything was good to me. I know I'm going to be okay. Um, I know there's nothing that's wrong with me. I'm, I'm strong. I'm fine. And I just, I just don't, um, I don't believe in any of that stuff. So, um, luckily, a little bit later in that afternoon, about 2 o'clock, um, my best friend from childhood, Raymond, came up. He's a pastor from Lancaster. He had heard and seen on Facebook that I was in the hospital. Um, he drove four hours to come up and see me. And we just chatted like, you know, like old times, and everything was good. He prayed for me. And about 10 o'clock, the specialist lady came in, and uh, she grabbed a hold of me and st started pushing the tube down inside of me again. And this time she ruptured me um, pretty significantly. Um, I started shooting up blood about a foot and a half. Um, literally the whole floor was flooded with blood. The bed, I started shaking. I went into shock. Um, I was freezing. Um, my blood pressure jumped up all the way up to 198. Um, the nurses and the doctors that were in the room were calling for more people to come in to try to figure out how to stop the bleeding and how to get me to calm down. And uh, right about then, Raymond came running into the room and they asked him to leave because I was exposed and there was a mess in there. And he told him, no, he wasn't leaving me, uh, that I was his brother. And he at that time put his hand in my chest, slammed it in there extremely hard and um, asked God to take over my, my body and to uh, relieve um, um, all the blood coming out. Asked him to get me out of shock, quit the freezing. Um, and uh, he looked up at the monitor and seen that it was at 198, mm. and that's about the checkout time. And uh, he asked, uh, he asked the Lord to get my blood pressure back down to 145. Mm. And it took about six, seven, eight seconds of him just slamming in my chest and praying, praying, praying. And literally, the blood stopped, mm. the freezing stopped. I quit shaking in the bed like a fish. And the one little nurse that was at the foot of my bed looked up at the monitor. And she says, oh, my God, it's a miracle. And we all looked up at the monitor, and my blood pressure was exactly at 145. Like hold hold that thought. Let, let's come back to it. I want the panel to continue on. Apostle, your thought. So the man of God comes rushing in, starts praying. I feel the anointing dropping right now. <laughs> Tell us what happened. Hallelujah. What should we expect, or what was God doing? Hallelujah. You know, I, I love that, that the man of God had to come in there and take over. I mean, he demanded it. He took a power and he took authority, you know, over his situation, and he was interceding for him, you know, and the Holy Spirit moved. He moved on his behalf because of his faith, and probably because of his faith, faith as well. But, but you know what? That's what I love about, about the Lord Jesus is that, you know what? You just start speaking those words out as if they were, okay? You know, you have to believe. And, and that's part of it right there is that once you believe that God is the one that's in control, he is the one that can do anything, the impossible be possible, it says in Luke one thirty seven. then that's exactly what happened with him in his situation. And so we give God the glory, you know, for that. Amen? Amen. I believe David, as many he started praying david was in total agreement that's why yes. two or more yes, with amen. jesus in the midst that's why a, they're speaking the word and it happened pastor your take on this i mean it's it's a great story it's a beautiful story and there's a lot of us out there that we might be in a similar situation and one thing was interesting like i always keep putting it out there david never agreed to any of the hectic craziness going on even when they were poking you, blood was coming out. And every time you said it, they happened two or three times, right? Yes. Wow. And he still never agreed with them right. and had faith. And, but also I want to talk about that pastor. Mm. Just imagine if something held him or he changed his mind or if he hesitated. Oh, my goodness, you're right. He wouldn't be here to this day. Understood. Right. You know, that's one thing about hearing from the voice of the Lord and responding. The Holy Spirit is in us. And that spirit, we have to be obedient to follow through. I encourage everybody out there, I would rather you step out there and try to do what God tried to, told you to do than to hesitate or wait because we really don't know what God has in plan. And I would encourage you to be like this pastor, obedient. Just He just happened to look at Facebook. Yes. You know, I can only imagine. We don't know. He's not here, but the Holy Spirit probably prod him say look at this oh wow what David's yes. sick I gotta yes. go see him now boom yes. and that second he came in and they told him what you can't come in here 
That's he correct. says, no, I'm staying. He was persistent. Yes. Regardless of the circumstances, laid hands on you, basically prophesied the will of the Lord over your life, and boom, you're here today giving a testimony. Amen. That's called obedience at the highest level. Absolutely. Because there at any given time, he could have changed his mind, hesitated, and you wouldn't be here. Powerful word, Pastor. I want to commend David for the faith, believing everything that the man of God said. I, I, I can't even imagine being at with blood, uh, you know, all over your, your bed's covered, the floor's covered, everybody's screaming and panicking, thinking it's all over, and he stands in faith and agrees with his brother as he speaks the word of the Lord. Go ahead and continue, sir. So just about when that finishes up, um, Raymond leans into me and he whispers into my ear, um, David, it wasn't me, it was God. Amen. And then, um, Amen. like I tell all my friends, the air conditioning system with the air ducts, and they blew dust in our eyes, and we started tearing up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Good <laughs> word. We were crying, but it was just the dust. So anyway, we stayed around for a while, and um, he stayed there until the, they put me, wheeled me back down to the emergency room, and they did the operation for the fourth time, and it was a success. Amen. And then uh, he went home about 2 o'clock in the morning, at about 10 o'clock the next morning, a little gal comes in from hospice, and she has a little brochure she wants to hand me, and she says, hey, Mr. Kratz, I'm going to hand you a brochure. You need to read this. Uh, last night in the hospital, you contracted septus, and your septus count is at 28, and you literally have 30 days to live, get your affairs in order. And I looked at her, and I says, absolutely not. I remember it. And I said, you, you have to reverse this. And she says, it's impossible to reverse. I said, no. If I got it in here in the hospital, then you can take it out of me in the hospital. And she said, it doesn't work that way. And I said, it's going to work that way. And so she Can I stop you there? Yeah. That's so powerful. I know what you're going to say next. I mean, can you imagine one emergency after another? And David, in perfect faith, no, that's not me. No, that's <laughs> not it. Now, isn't it interesting? He says the fourth time. Fourth means creative works. Interesting. And when the doctor came back, it was the tenth hour. Interesting. Divine order. Apostle, help us understand what he's going through. So he gets out of death once, but the enemy comes back again and goes, no, you don't. You're going for sure. Lead us through it. <laughs> Well, you know, and that's, I mean, and that's how the enemy works. And he's always just coming to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he wants to do. He wants to come in there in John 10, 10. That's what it says. But Jesus says at the other end of that scripture that he comes to give you life. And so that's what I believe that brother was speaking. You know, he's like, no, I'm going to live life. After all this stuff that I have gone through right now, I am going to live. And so we need to encourage each and every one of you that are going through situations in your, in your life to speak life into those situations as if they were. Like it's already done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to commend God with David's faith. Now, I mean, come on now. One miracle and then again, who would have the courage, the faith, even the fortitude to even think that two miracles are possible, let alone this devastating news? No, you don't understand. It's done. You're done. Your thought, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Wow. Second Corinthians 2 through 13 talks about spiritual truths. Those spiritual truths are in us. And that is our spirit man actually responding to these negative words. I mean, at that time, you didn't know what was going on. You just knew by your spirit working in you, no. And the key thing is, is that I don't know, David, personally about what you do in your business or what God has called you to do. I have no idea. But the bottom line is, David knew he's not going to die. God knew David's going to touch thousands and thousands of people's lives. And so it's interesting, time and time again, they tried to get you to connect with the lies. Yep. That's the bottom line. Yep. And so many times people always talk about the devil, the devil, the devil. Remember, people. The devil can do anything without God's permission. Job is very clear about that because the devil had to go ask, Lord, can I come against your servant Job? Can I do this? And we can read up there about Job. We know what happened. The Lord said, do what you got to do. Don't kill him. Well, obviously, there was a conversation between the devil and the Lord regarding David. And I can see the conversation in that conversation. As long as he doesn't agree with you, you can't take him. <laughs> Amen. Go 
Good word. Now, we're running out of time. David, why don't you go through the rest of it, and then we'll pray for the folks after. I think it's just a powerful. And can you come back again? We'll do it at the same time tomorrow yeah. night. Go ahead. So after we're, um, the lady left, first phone call was back to Raymond. Told him I needed a little help again. And told him what happened. And he said, well, what did you, you still believe? You, you didn't doubt it for a second. No, you never and, said that. I. So I'm, he goes, did, did you? Did you agree with her? And I said, absolutely not. I asked her for the doctor to come in. I, I wanted to, you know, have the words with the doctor and stuff like that. And he says, well, we're just going to pray. We're going to repent this right now. You're not going to accept it. And da da da, da. You're going to be just fine. And so Raymond did his, his work again, prayed for me again. And um, a little while later, the doctor comes in. He says, David, you know, you need to really take this seriously. You've got 30 days. I says, no, you don't understand. If, you know, we did the blood transfusions. We did everything take the blood back out put new blood back in he says it doesn't work that way I says it's going to work that way and so um, I literally yeah. stayed in the hospital until the 28th of April and that's when I got out and um, then they assigned you to go to a, a chemotherapy doctor in about six weeks I go in to go see him and uh, he comes in with a chart and he looks at me and he says wow you look really good I said well thank you I think and he sa I says, what does that mean? He goes, well, usually I don't see anybody look this good before surgery. And I said, well, I already had my surgery like six weeks ago. And he goes, no, you didn't. And I said, well, okay, dude, stop. You either got the wrong room, the wrong patient, or the wrong chart. Figure it out. And so the guy goes through the chart, and he gets about six, seven, eight pages in there. And he says, oh, yeah, you had surgery on the second. And, um, oh, my gosh, you didn't do your chemo. He picks up his phone and starts to order the chemo. And I tell the guy, stop that. Um, I'm not here to take chemo today. I'm here to figure out what you can do and what you have to offer me. And he goes, chemo is your only way. And I said, chemo is not my only way. Yeah. And so we debated again, and, and it's like, uh, dude, um, you know, chemo kills people. And he says, well, you don't have a choice. And I says, well, what's my odds? And he says, well, the doctor, by taking out your two tumors, he increased your life by 50%. I said, okay, so what's the other 50%? He goes, well, if you let me do chemo, then... I'll increase that 50% by 30%. I said, well, dude, that's 50-50. That's crap. <laughs> and so the guy's like, well, you don't have a choice. I said, well, I do have a choice. I said, if I played in sports and I go 50-50 on a basketball free float line, I'm, I'm on the bench. I'm out of the game. So we're not going to do that. And so he goes, well, what are you going to do? And I says, well, I'm going to pray. And then I'm taking some uh, dandelion root supplements. And he goes, I've never even heard of that. <laughs> And I said, well, maybe you ought to do your research. And he goes, well, it doesn't work. And I said, well, dude, if it doesn't work, how do you not know about it? And so, <laughs> so we went back and forth on that. And then I said, listen, long story short was you guys put 28 new quarts of blood in me. If I was a car and you come in to see me in my business, we change the oil in your car, you get all brand new oil, you're pretty much good to go. So if I got 28 new quarts of blood in me, I should be good to go. And he says, no, that doesn't work that way. Your blood is tainted. And I said, well, what does that mean? He goes, well, your, your body keeps making these cancer cells. I said, well, then I'll take my chances because it took 56 years for me to get cancer. I'll take a chance. It'll take, me, take another 56 years to grow more cancer. So I'm good. And so finally he decided he was just going to kick me out and take me to um, um, another specialist to have my blood test, test done. And long story short, we did that. And six weeks later, the results come back. It's 100% clean. There's no cancer. There's oh, everything is gone. Amen. 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 <laughs> powerful, powerful. Um, Praise the Lord. What did you learn, sir? Tell us in your own words. we got a few minutes. I never give up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's it's seriously. Just, 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 you know, keep believing. Um, been knocked in the head a couple times. I believe now really heavy, and uh, um, it's all real now. So I'm good. You, you know, this is a power, This is what they call a hero. In the Bible, it says it 130 times. I think it's just fascinating. And he was released from the hospital on the 20th. It means redemption. Apostle, help the people understand. Let's close it out. Pray for the people. They're all struggling. Maybe they don't have iron faith like David here. But, I mean, talk about faith. I don't know anybody that was going to be dead twice that says, no, I'm not. I'm standing on the word and coming through like you did, 100% healed. What is your thought to help the people? I believe that he was a supernatural hero in the spirit realm yeah, already, yeah, you know. Man. But it says in Proverbs 18:21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, okay. and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And that's exactly what he did. He believed it. He spoke it. He said, I am not dying. I'm going to live. 
And he did. So right now, Father God, we just lift up the people to you right now, Lord. The ones, Lord, that are having issues, Lord, in their bodies right now, Lord, that those words that have been spoken to them, that they will, you know, that they, they have no life. They have no choice. They have no chance. But we rebuke those words right now, Father God, and we speak life into them, Father God. Lord, that you are the creator of, of, of creation, Father God, that, that you will create new blood cells, Father God, that you will do the most amazing thing in these people, Father God, who need you, Father God. I, I ask you for the spirit of life right now to bring peace to these people right now, Father God, that you will cover them, Lord, and that they will be victorious and overcomers, Lord, as, as David came out to be, Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you for, for your glory over his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor, pray us out. We only got a few minutes. Well, Father God, I just thank you for this testimony that David had. And Lord, we just declare and decree that this will stir the hearts of the people that are listening. And, Lord, we declare duplication and multiplication. Father God, that everybody's spirit man will be quick and it will come up to a new heights. Father God, we even declare that the Holy Spirit that is working in all of us will come to new heights, Lord. And we just know that your word will go forth and it will produce fruit. As with the disciples, as with the, the apostles, they went forth and did all those and healed all those oppressed for the devil because the spirit of the Lord was in them. And I thank you for that same spirit residing in each and every one of you. And I encourage you, believe the unbelievable. God can use you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Powerful Amen. testimony. I'm going to agree with David right now because he's the one with the anointing. And this is how they did it in the Hebrews. It was actually like this, but, you know, for the sake of time and your manhood, I'll just put my hand on your knee. So <laughs> as, uh, watch this. It says in Deuteronomy 28, 47, it says, I will not lack. I believe David didn't have lack of faith. Now watch this. As a man think of it, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. And here's one more just to, to solidify. The prophetic word will not come back void. Uh, Ezra 6, 14. So I believe, Father, as we stand in agreement that David has a healing anointing. And this yes. is just something that just didn't happen. God right. has resurrected his life again to pray for others, to include others. But more importantly, so he's going to raise up an army of business people. What Hallelujah. do business people do? Amen. They're influencer. He's going to influence a generation that's going to change life. The invention that he has, it's a woody invention, Proverbs 8, 12. I guarantee you the Lord has given this powerful that will change the face of the earth or what we know it today. Not only will fame and fortune will come to him, but he'll have a group of people that will encourage others. I believe this will spin off of healing rooms with these financially gifted men. They're going to fund healing rooms for others that doctors say you don't have any hope. You, you know, Amen. you're going to die Amen. just like what happened to him. Yeah. The same thing. He's going to lead it like a John Light. They're all going to come to these healing rooms, Hallelujah. and the percentage is going to be way higher than they gave him to die, that they're going to live. We give you glory and praise for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So thank you for watching. Until next week, you'll see David tomorrow, 7th, 8.30. I hope that's right. 8.30. <laughs> with me, as always, is Apostle Cora. Pastor bless you. will be back with me on Friday, and I will see David at 8.30. Don't go away. Another powerful testimony. Till next week, we'll see you. I'm Pastor Todd. Thanks for Good watching. Good night. Powerful, powerful.